Are you ready to take a break from the present? Come on a journey with me. Back to 8-Bit. Hello, and welcome to Back to 8-Bit. Today I'm going to take a look at my self-build clone of the Harlequin Nuvo 128K ZX Spectrum clone. A brand new Spectrum built by scratch. Now, this one uh, is, is the one I built. Uh, I do regret not filming myself build this, uh, but <laughs> it would be a pretty long video with my uh, uh, soldering uh, skills. Uh, so I'll just take it apart and, and show you what I did and I'll show you a few examples on how it was done. Now, the case was bought from uh, ZX Renew. Uh, I did have to modify it a little bit where uh, I had to uh, cut out a few holes to be able to fit the board into, to, to, to fit in the uh, RGB socket, the ZX Spectrum joysticks port. The in and out uh, audio sockets were already inside the case. Uh, and again, the power socket was already there as well. And if you notice as well on the side, uh, there is a couple of uh, switches there which control the uh, reset and the uh, hard, well the, the SD card as well, which fits into here, which really replaces the uh, tape recorder and allows you to play the games from the SD card straight into the ZX Spectrum. And obviously the Nuvo 128K board did incorporate micro SD card. Okay, let's uh, get this. Take the time with this. I don't like taking this apart too many times because it can upset the plastic threads in the case. And even though uh, there is a, on the case you've got the uh, holes where the sound speaker, internal speaker used to come through uh, of the old Spectrum. However, uh, the sound on the Nuvo board does come through the TV. Very similar to the uh, 1 to 8K machines. carefully because obviously the membrane will be attached to the uh, board and it gradually take them out slowly carefully there we go and that's the board if I do show you uh, an original ZX Spectrum 48k board you can see a huge difference between the two boards usually on these systems they are, there's another screw that places the uh, board inside the uh, case, but there's not much going on inside this, uh, on this board, and there's no room for the clip, so it just literally places into the case on its own. And if we just switch the board over, you'll see all my soldering artwork, and I don't claim to be an expert at doing this. Uh, you know, I am all self-taught, but after a while, you know, you do get used to it. Um, you will see, uh, obviously, the memory card slots into there. There's a dip switch there as well, which allows you to control the uh, the ROM really to make it to to, to, to really demonstrate how the uh, computer can boot. You can turn it into a ZX81 or a Plus Two or a Plus Three or just a standard 48k Spectrum. Um, I've got it pretty much set up for the uh, one to eight k toast rack uh, because I believe that's best system to run to be more compatible with majority of the games for the ZX Spectrum what's enjoying the Spectrum 128k mode. As you will see um, all these chips are actually socketed 
and I'll show you some uh, pictures of the uh, original board in a little short while. Uh, but the reason why these are socketed is al it just allows you to be able to take the chip out easily and replace it if you need to without having to desolder uh, the uh, chips, which <laughs> if anybody's had to go at doing it, you can make a bit of a mess with it where uh, you can remove some of the tram lines off the back of the board by desoldering these chips because the pins are so close together. Um, you'll see this one here, <laughs> I, I was missing a socket, so I did put that straight into the board. And there's also um, a couple of parts where there is a chip underneath the, uh, an existing chip. You just see underneath that one, just I believe it's close, there's another chip underneath that. So that's not socketed because it's got to be as close to the bottom of the board as, as possible to make way for this chip here. But the other reason for um, socketing it is because the majority of the mistakes that get made when they are built is these chips are put upside down uh, and if you do make that mistake you can just put it out and put it the right way in if you see uh, closely there's little diplets at the top of the, which tell you really which way the chip should be and you can work that against the plan uh, of the uh, 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 the Nouveau board so how do we do this well this is the shopping list that I got to uh, build the uh, Nuvo 128K board. And you can go onto most reputable component sites such as uh, DigiKey and uh, purchase the uh, components. There are a few chips that you probably still need to get from somewhere like eBay for the uh, uh, more rarer designated spectrum components. You also have um, a plan as well to how the circuit is built. And it's like painting by numbers <laughs> uh, where you use the uh, shopping list and you then match up the, uh, uh, the numbers to the components. And that is the board that you purchased, the blank board. And as you can see, it's already got all the tram lines already built in and the uh, plan of where all the chips and components should go, which again, you can match to the uh, plan. You just gotta be careful about polarity on some of the components as well, just making sure the chips are the right way round. Right, I should show you some of the photos that I took during my build, the uh, Nuvo 128K board. This is a picture of the board with the sockets already placed into the board. At this point, they're not soldered at any point. There's the chips ready and waiting to be placed into the sockets once they've been soldered in. Uh, I did do this last, I made sure the components were into place and sold into the board before I started putting the uh, chips into place. Again, a bit more close up of the components than I had. And there's the, uh, the completed board again the board that you saw in my video earlier. And that was a picture of me testing it out for the first time. As you can see, I'm not using that white case that I originally showed you. I just put the, uh, well, quickly connected spare keyboard ad line around. It was actually a plus case, which had a membrane in which I connected it to the board. And then I connected the ZX uh, HD uh, interface into the back of the edge connector so I can connect it to my TV bar HDMI. As I said, they, on the board you do get uh, a plug where you can go straight to RGB and plug it to a SCART socket, uh, but in this instance when I tested it, I plugged it straight into my ZX HD. And there I am playing a game, Jet, I think, yep, Jet Set Willy, that one was. And uh, I was actually amazed uh, when I switched this on because it worked 
first time uh, i've read so many times on the forums where people have had little issues where they've had to fix where they've got like things run the wrong way around or had bad solder joints uh plugged in and it was a a, a bit of a job to uh decipher any teething or problem solving uh, issues but it worked straight off the cuff so i was really really pleased uh that worked that probably saved me many hours of uh messing around and solving any problems or solving any mistakes that I made. Okay, and there you have it. I thought I'll just uh, get the uh, system put back together again for you and show it running on uh, uh, my monitor. Uh, it's all connected to show you it all works. And if I can just go down the different options, you can load up the old classic 48k modes and so forth buttons on the side as well allow you to uh, do a reset on the computer and then just next to it you can see you've got the memory card as well so you press the memory the other button next to it brings up the memory card and let's try and load up a game just to show the computer running a game. Well, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the ZX Nuvo 128K build. I hope to be back very soon. Catch you later. Goodbye.